Pero desgraciado. Ella no lo soportaba, dijo. Sí, porque él, él se portó. Good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening. Hello. What I'm going to go on. Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to your class number three. Uh, we are studying how to answer some questions when we are looking for a job or for example, we are looking for a promotion in our workplaces. So we are learning how to talk about sales, right? Teacher. Hi. Hi, you sound funny. Really? Yes. Um, like cutting? Or yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Like cutting. Can you confirm everyone? Can you hear me okay? Maybe now. Is it better now? I hear you the same. No. All right, I will find that anything there. Maybe it's going to be better. Y el cargado. Ahí está. No sé qué es lo que están diciendo, capaz.
No se escucha, teacher. Ya te agua. Can you hear me now? Yes, teacher. Yes, miss. Just one second, because now I can't need, I can't hear you very well. <laughs> All right. Now it's the other way. All right. I hope everything will be okay. Okay, people. Now me to put this away. Sometimes I am losing my things too. All right, people, we were saying that we were studying about how to answer some questions when we want to get a promotion in our jobs, right? Do you remember? Do you remember the first topic? Do you remember the first topic? Using can. Use can and can, right? When we talk about our abilities, our abilities. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what's the structure? What is the structure? Remember, subject, then we use can for positive, and also we use a verb in mm -hmm. positive form, and then a complement, right? So an, an example of those will be, I can use a computer. Okay, then I is the subject, can is the auxiliary verb, and use is the infinitive or the base form of the verb, right? So that's the grammar structure. Now, if we talk about the things that we are not able to do, we use the negative form, remember? We use the negative form. And after, after the question, uh, okay, after the first question, we said what uh, how can you contribute to the company, right? How can you contribute to the company? And we were saying that we use would 
and could. But this is just when we want to express or give the impression of something that it is going to happen in the future. Um, if a condition happened, right? If a thing happened before, so like a condition, right? So it's very interesting. It's very interesting that um, if a native speaker, they have they use could and would interchangeably, right? So we are going to see just a little bit about the use of would and could be, all right? So let's remember just a little bit. And here we go. Okay, yesterday we were studying would be and could be, right? And the question was, how can you contribute the, uh, to this company? Maybe you are looking for a job or maybe you are looking for a promotion, okay? Promotion means that you want to get a better pos job position, right? You want uh, better incomes, right? We, you want to get a better salary too. So you are looking for something better in the company. You want to grow in the company. So when you have to apply for another job position, then you, uh, you have to pass all the process and like tests, exams, and also interviews too. Uh, to see your qualifications and also uh, what are your contributions, right? What are your contributions or what your contributions would be, okay? So let's think, let's think just a little bit like this. The question was this one, right? And it was, what can you contribute to the company? What? Can you contribute to the company? Or how can you contribute to the company? Then we are not going to answer with can um, properly. I mean, limited to can. No, we are going to use would be and could be because we are going to answer with imaginary situations, okay? Entonces, estamos viendo que tenemos, um, cuando nosotros queremos una mejor eh, un mejor puesto de trabajo dentro de nuestras compañías. Tenemos que pasar el proceso, ¿verdad? Tal como un candidato externo, ¿verdad? Pero obviamente eh, nosotros que estamos dentro conocemos la situación, sabemos a lo que podemos aplicar, a lo que podemos aspirar, ¿verdad? Sin embargo, tenemos que pasar siempre el proceso, ¿verdad? Las entrevistas y también los exámenes y todo eso. Entonces, una parte es lo que estamos viendo en esta unidad, ¿right? Job listings. Acuérdense que job listings es the description or the roles, the qualifications that you're looking for in a person or in a candidate. Las, las habilidades que están buscando en un candidato, ¿verdad? Entonces, veamos. La primera pregunta era, what are your qualifications? La siguiente pregunta es, what can you contribute to the company? Que la vimos ayer. Entonces, para contestar esta, dijimos que we are going to answer this way. Vamos a contestar de esta manera. To answer the question, use would be and could be. This is to give an impression as if it was a possibility, but in the future, like in an imaginary situation, right? For example, for example, we were saying yesterday that you contribute to the mission of your company. For example, if you arrive work early, um, if you assist clients satisfactorily, um, also if you, um, for example, um, study, right? You study while you are working. I mean, um, you have been growing or preparing yourself right, studying, maybe completing your career, or for example, hmm, you are doing your job the best way you can, right? Maybe you have good ideas and you implement your ideas. So in a future, you will be promoted, right? You would be 
promoted, okay? Then it's an imaginary situation because that's not their reality, okay? That's not their reality. Entonces, cuando hablamos de algo que todavía no es realidad, pero existen las condiciones para que esto pueda llegar a ser una realidad, entonces usamos esto, ¿verdad? Would be and could be. Entonces, veamos por acá algunos ejemplos, some examples, ¿ok? Some examples. So, let's remember, let's remember the conversation that, the, that Ben and Kurt had. And they were saying that um, the contributions were like, would be of great help, right? Would be of great help. Okay, let's read this. Leamos entonces por acá. Let's read this. A ver, who wants to help me reading? ¿Quién quiere ayudarme a leer acá? Estas oraciones, these statements. Hi, teacher. Okay, please. I will be, be the, the bill author of innovate uh, strategies. 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 Okay. Ajá, va, leámoslo juntas para que tengamos una pronunciación más acertada, ¿ok? Primero que would, no vamos a pronunciar la letra L, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Vamos a decir, I, I would, I, I would, would be, be the developer, but the developer of innovative of innovative strategies 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 ah, okay mm -hmm. okay by un, un tip que podemos tener todos es open your mouth okay open your mouth al principio se siente así como un poco extraño y creen que uno está exagerando pues sí estamos exagerando para qué para que nuestro cerebro registre cómo se pone la boca para poder pronunciar correctamente. No hay cosa mejor que cuando aprendemos un nuevo idioma o otro idioma extranjero, lo pronunciemos bien, ¿verdad? Entonces, probémonos y esforcémonos por abrir la boca. Ahorita puede ser exagerado, pero poco a poco va a ir siendo natural. Okay, little by little, you will be feeling this as natural. Okay, entonces, diciendo, I will be, abriendo la boca, opening your mouth, I will be the developer of innovative strategy. Uh -huh. okay. Vamos okay. a ver, ¿quién quiere leer la número uno? Who wants to read number one? Yo, teacher. Okay, please do. I could be the developer of innovative strategies. Very good. Innovative. Innovative, right? Innovative. Yes. Strategies. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's read the second one. I will read it first and you model the, the language, okay? I could be the link between the company and the government negotiations. Okay, I will read it again. I could be the link between the company and the government negotiations. Who wants to read the second one? My teacher. Okay. Uh, I see Claudia Maria is raising her hand. I could, I could be the link between the company and the government negotiations. Good. Very good. And who said me, teacher? Can you say your name? I'm sorry. I couldn't identify. No pude identificar. Me, teacher. Okay, please, please. Please mm -hmm. do, Mauricio. Mm -hmm. teacher? Yes, because you're okay. raising your okay. hand. Huh? The second. Yes, the second. Okay. I could, I could be the link between the company and government negotiation. 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 
All right, very good, very good. Okay, then here, this is a possibility, okay? But maybe it's also ability, right? Because could is the past of can, would is the past of will, okay? So let's read this, the third one. Y vemos que aquí tenemos can in the, the present tense, right? So it means that can can be used also as a possibility, right? And maybe for the future itself, right? When we use the present for future, you will fill it, okay? And it says, I can be a technical support assessor for these and other apps developments. I can be a technical support assessor for these and other apps developments, okay? Who wants to read the third one? Me, teacher. Me is Norma. Okay, okay, Norma, yes. please. Mm -hmm. I can be a technical support accessor for this and other apps development. Very good, very good. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's not an operator, but maybe he's got a lot of good ideas, right? So he, he can be an assessor, right? So let's read the last one. And it says, I could be the creator of appropriate incomes and assets controls in your organization. I will read it again. I could be the creator of appropriate incomes and assets controls in your organization. All right. Who wants to read the last one? Okay, Sandra, go ahead. All right, maybe she's not ready. Emerson, please read the last one. Okay, Miss. I could be the creator of the appropriate incomes and access controls in your organizations. Great. Great, so it means that it's a possibility and maybe it could be an ability, right? An ability, why? Because he is able to do it. Maybe he's got the back, uh, I mean, the background in studies or in techniques or maybe his work experience, right? So he says, I could be, I can be, I could be, I would be. Okay, if you see, we use I, you, he, she, it, we, they, with the same form of would, okay? It doesn't have a different form. It's the same form. It doesn't change. And we use an infinitive after would, all right? We use an infinitive. In this case, we are not going to say, for example, I would am. Um, mm -mm, that's incorrect. I can't say I would eat. Uh, she would ease. Mm, no, that's incorrect. We need the infinitive or the base form of the verb. Okay. Also for could. It's the same for could. I could be. You could be. He could be. It could be. Okay, what will be the negative form of wood? The negative mm. form of wood. Hmm? I would not be. Exactly, exactly. And we make this shorter like wouldn't, wouldn't, right? Wouldn't. Oh, sorry, maybe it's number 10. Yes. Uh, number zero. And then this means would not. Okay. This is the negative form. Wouldn't, would not. Wouldn't, would not. For example, for example, I wouldn't be the developer of innovative. That's, that doesn't make sense, right? But if we want to say this as a negative form, then we could say I wouldn't be. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't be. What is the negative form of could? Couldn't. Yes. Oh. Couldn't. Couldn't. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
couldn't. And this means could not. Okay? Could not. There you go. So we have I couldn't be, you couldn't be, he couldn't be, it couldn't be, she couldn't be, we couldn't be, they couldn't be. Okay. So we are use we can use as mm, well in the formal way, I think when we are speaking, it's not so mm, I mean. It's not an appropriate. It's good to use the short form, all right? It doesn't matter if you use the short form or the long form, okay? The complete form. So it doesn't matter. You can use both. Sometimes in some other auxiliary verbs, yes, it sounds informal if you use the contraction instead of the complete form. But in this case, I think it does. It, it doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter what way you use. Wouldn't, would not, it's okay. Couldn't or could not, it's okay. So let's continue and let's look at this. When do we use would and when do we use could, right? That was the question yesterday. That was the question yesterday. Yesterday we were so worried because this is kind of confusing. But if we think about only one meaning, like a possibility in the future, then we are going to understand just a little bit more, okay? Allow me to do this. Maybe I can, maybe I can. Here it is. One sec. Oops. Okay, then we are trying to remember just the way to answer the question about the contributions, right? But usually we say would and could could be used interchangeably. Yeah, but they have slight difference in the meaning, okay? They need, they need to make sense in the sentence. So let's try to say this. We use would for polite requests. We would use could for, for, for polite requests too. We use would for offerings and invitations. And we use could for permission, okay? Even though if we try to use this for offering, yeah, we can do it in a polite way. Like, could I help you? It's not so common. Like, can I help you, right? That's offering my help. But it, if we see would and could, they both are used for possibility. Look for possibility. For conditionals, they are both used for conditionals. They are used for would for desires because it's the passive will. And could is used for abilities because it's the passive can, right? So let's read these two uh, examples. These are some examples using would and could, but you are going to see that they mean uh, just a little different, okay? So let's read this. It will be great to form a part of this innov innovative company. It could be great to form a part of this innovative company. Mm, what do you think? What, bueno, yo les he consignado acá correct and incorrect, even though there is not correct or incorrect, okay? There is not correct and incorrect in this one because it depends on the context, okay? El significado de estas dos oraciones va a venir dado por el contexto, okay? Pero asumiendo y partiendo de que lo que estamos nosotros buscando es ser contratados o ser promovidos, right? To be hired or promoted, entonces partiendo de eso, 
Veamos que sí, ¿cómo, ¿cómo leeríamos esta? A ver. It would be great to form a part of this innovative company. Veamos la siguiente. It could be great to form a part of this innovative company. A ver, en la primera, ¿qué connotación sentimos? A ver, it would be great to form a part of this innovative company. La connotación en explicación podría ser que... Una posibilidad. Exactly, as a possibility, right? As a possibility. Y si vemos la siguiente, it could be great to form a part of this innovative company. A ver, ¿dirán lo mismo o darán la misma idea o ven alguna diferencia entre los dos? Sí, uno, uno es como una posibilidad y el otro es como, como un, un deseo, una, una, un, 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 un querer. All right. En ese caso, would sería el que nos da el deseo. Miren, would es el que nos da o expresa como el deseo, ¿verdad? Pero como un deseo definido, ¿verdad? Un deseo, algo que yo sí si quiero, ¿verdad? Uh, que está más cierto que incierto. ¿ya? Ahora, veamos en la siguiente. It could be great to form a part of this innovative company. Aquí en este caso, si nos acordamos de que could es el pasado de quien y quien expresa habilidades, could está relacionado por ahí, ¿verdad? Está relacionado también a posibilidad. Podríamos decir así, probablemente, probablemente no lo logró, ¿verdad? Por, probablemente no logró pasar los exámenes o va a tener que volver a hacer la segunda vuelta. Me, me doy a entender. Porque quien, could es el pasado de quién. También puede tener otro sentido, ¿verdad? ¿Qué otro sentido pudiera tener? Puede ser un sentido en el que yo me estoy esforzando por obtener eso, ¿verdad? Por obtener eh, esa contratación, ¿verdad? O ser parte de la compañía. Y estoy en el camino de lograrlo, ¿verdad? O sea, no lo he logrado y es una posibilidad, ¿verdad? Igual como would si se dan las condiciones. O sea que dependiendo del contexto, Puede ser correcto o incorrecto. Entonces, dependerá muchas veces de las preguntas, dependerá muchas veces de lo que queramos expresar, ¿ok? Pero mi mayor consejo es que cuando ustedes quieran usar o contestar esta pregunta, se vean en esa pregunta, o en una pregunta de responder algo hacia futuro, como una situación imaginaria, sustituyamos. Sustituyamos el would por el will y sustituyamos el could por el can. Esa es una, como una estrategia. No siempre va a funcionar, pero en su generalidad funciona. ¿Ok? Entonces, ese es un buen tip. Veamos en la siguiente. Veamos en the next one. I will be the one and only technical agent in the domestic program when I complete the course. Ha, here we have a condition, right? After this word, when, we have a condition, right? When I complete the curse. Y si lo vemos de este lado, ya cambiando el orden y poniendo could, diría, when I complete the curse, I could be the one and only technical agent in the domestic program. Okay? ¿Querrá decir lo mismo? A ver, alguien me explica así como qué sentido le haya a la primera y qué sentido le haya a la segunda. A ver, así como hablamos de esta. En la, en la primera es un yo debería ser él. Y en la otra es cuando yo lo termine yo podría ser. 
Ah, ok. Más como posibilidad, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Ajá, ok. Muy bien. Y si vemos que las dos son posibilidades a futuro, cumplen una condición, ¿verdad? Would be and could be, las dos son posibilidad a futuro. Pero tienen una pequeña diferencia, así como dice su compañero. I would be es como yo sería, ¿ok? Como más a lo cierto, ¿verdad? Y en el otro sería como yo estaría capacitado para, ¿ok? ¿Por qué? Porque si hacemos lo mismo que les decía, ¿verdad? Sustituimos el could por el can y el will por el would. Nos da más o menos esa idea que dice su compañero, ¿ok? Vaya, espero que vayamos. Esto es de ir razonando, ¿ok? Razonando un poquito. Pero luego vamos a ver ya un poquito más tranquilo esto, ¿ok? Vamos a ver. It says, would you be in contact with your last team partners? Veamos la siguiente pregunta. Could you be in contact with your last team partners? Ajá. ¿Qué sentido tendrá la primera pregunta? What is the sense in the first question? La, la primera tiene como, uh, no, no sé, como una precaución, como, como una reflexión en la pregunta. Y, y la segunda es, una, es igual una posibilidad o una condición. La segunda suena como una petición. Oh, ok. Like a, like a request. Ok. Ok. Uh -huh. I can request it sounds good too. Uh -huh. La primera siento yo que como, como que si le estuvieran preguntando, ¿verdad? estarías y la otra es como que una posibilidad podrías, como que es diferente. Este, uh -huh. Como, ajá, como, como una posibilidad en la segunda, siento, no sé. Ok, uh -huh. una posibilidad. Y volvemos al punto. Si lo, si lo sustituimos, es correcto, es directo, ¿verdad? La primera. La primera sería como bien directo, así como estarás en contacto, ¿verdad? Con ellos, en el sentido de que si como que él tenga el deseo de hacerlo, ¿ya? Ahora, en la siguiente puede ser... I think, como si será permitido, right, que pueda estar en contacto o si va a tener la habilidad. La habilidad, bueno, todo el mundo tiene la habilidad porque todo el mundo tiene un teléfono, todo el mundo tiene redes sociales, o sea, cualquier persona puede estar en contacto. Pero si le ponemos condicionantes como permitido, ¿Ya? Condicionantes como mmm, estaremos lejos, ¿verdad? Entonces ahí se borra como la posibilidad probablemente de pagar, ¿verdad? Las llamadas, qué sé yo, mandar las encomiendas, whatever, ¿ok? Could you be in contact with your lasting partners? ¿Ok? Entonces sí, todo va a depender, volvemos a el contexto. ¿Verdad? Todo va a depender al contexto. Pero la idea ya la tomamos. Exacto. La primera es como más directa y la segunda es como más polite, ¿verdad? Más indirecta. Ok. Leamos la última. Could you have better incomes? Would you have better incomes? Ok. Could you have better incomes? Would you have better incomes? What do you think? What is the sense in the first question?
A ver, Daisy. What do you think? Como qué sentido okay. tendrá la primera y qué sentido tiene la segunda. En la primera podría ser tener una certeza de, de la posibilidad o certeza. Podría, dice, tener un mejor ingreso. Entonces es una posibilidad. The possibility. Po podría, right. sí. Y en la second one, eh, tendría ahí como que hay un... Como que ya estuviera contratado y, y iba a tener mejores ingresos. Uh, yes, you're right. La certeza. That's true. You get the idea. And yes, that's what is correct and what is incorrect. Okay? So, it, it, that's correct. You have the idea that when we use would or could, it's a possibility in the future. Maybe that doesn't have, I mean, that hasn't had happened yet, but it's going to happen if the conditions are met, right? Okay, people, so let's go to the next part, okay? Let's go to our manuals. Let me just start sharing here. <laughs> and in the manuals, we have uh, an activity right after the conversation we were practicing yesterday. And there was a pair work, okay? And the first, the first um, question was, what will be some benefits of having Kurd in the company? So I want me to share this with you. Maybe I can do this better. Okay. Here, there. Teacher, your microphone. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I read all the manual. <laughs> oh, my God. No way. Fíjense que no sé qué está pasando sinceramente con el manual. Ah, perdón, con el micrófono. I don't know what's going on. If you see, I don't touch it. No lo toco. Y eh, si se fijan, miren, les voy a contar. Ahora me prestó mi sobrina estos que ella los compró hoy, ¿verdad? Para ella. Y son súper caros, ¿verdad? Y no se pudieron... Eh, I couldn't pay her this with the computer. These are mine. Okay, these are mine. They are kind of expensive too, and I couldn't do it. I started, but se desactivan. De ahí, eh, este es como un adaptador, si lo miran. Es un adaptador. Y si se fijaran aquí en mi mesa detrás de la computadora, tengo one, two, three, como cinco audífonos. Pero probablemente yo creo que es algo de la tarjeta de sonido porque definitivamente es por demás. Ok, bueno, después de este corto comercial, <risa> vamos a continuar, ok. We were saying that Andre and Kurt were talking about the benefits of having Kurt, right? Kurt, how comfortable do you feel working in the sales area? Pretty comfortable, sir. With my experience, I can say this would be a great opportunity. I'm sure about that. Look, can you bring, what can you bring to this company as an employee? I will be a great asset in the company because of my experience in the construction industry. It sounds great. Yes, and um, because of my experience as a manager, I could be of great help in large projects. Okay, 
according to the conversation, what will be some benefits of having curd in the company? What will be some benefits of having curd in the company? What do you think? Para comenzar, hagamos oraciones. Siempre que nos hagan una pregunta, vea que siempre que nos hacen una pregunta nos quedamos en blanco y no sabemos qué contestar. Bueno, la solución se las tengo el día de ahora. Ustedes pueden contestar haciendo una oración. No que se van a poner a orar, no, no, no. Van a contestar con un sujeto un verbo y un complemento. Y como necesitamos hacer una oración, a sentence, acordémonos que estamos usando un auxiliary verb, entonces la posición del auxiliary verb es antes del verbo. Bueno, entonces comencemos con eso. Armemos la primera oración para comenzar la respuesta. What would be some benefits of having Kurt in a company? Ok, podríamos hablar de Kurt o de la compañía, ¿ok? Entonces, si Kurt fuera el subject, podríamos decir, Kurt, yeah. ya empecé la respuesta, ¿ok? ¿Qué seguiría? Would, porque con would me preguntaron, ¿ok? Y como la expresión es would be, ¿ok? Kurt will be, ¿qué? ¿Qué sería Kurt? Uh -huh. De lo que decía en la, en la, acá, miren, aquí lo tenemos. Uh -huh. A ver, José Bernardo. I could be of Kurt. Uh, It would be a great asset in the company. Okay, a great, a great asset, asset, mm -hmm. asset in the company. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of his experience in con construction industry. Excellent, because of his experience in the construction industry. Okay, veamos el siguiente beneficio, the next benefit we have in the conversation. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. ¿Quién es nuestro sujeto en la siguiente? Kurt o la, com o la compañía? The company. Kurt. Kurt, ok. Kurt. Kurt. The... Oh. Great help in large projects. Okay, in large projects. Mm -hmm. Why? Because your experience as manager. He's, he's because he's, uh -huh, yeah. because he's, of his experience as a manager. Okay. Then, if you see, we have a condition here, all right? We have a condition and it goes after because, okay? After because, we have the condition for this to happen, all right? For example, it will be a great asset in the company because of his experience in the construction industry, okay? If he didn't have the experience in that field, then he wouldn't be a great asset, right? 
What about the next one? It says the same, right? The condition for this to happen is that he has experience as a manager. Yeah. And because he has been a manager before, then that is why he could be of great help in the large projects. So if you see, this is kind of a condition for this to happen or as a possibility in the future, okay? And let's read that. Let's read about that just uh, a little forward. But just let's see this. Do you consider that experience is important? Do you consider that experience is important? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is it important to be experienced? Yes. yes. Experimented? <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Yes. La pregunta es, do you consider? Entonces la respuesta es, yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. Y me preguntan, why? Ahora, como me preguntan why, yo contesto con because. because. Uh -huh. Okay, because. Can someone tell me? Because. Uh -huh. No, not is necessary. Capacitación. Think... Como... Ah, all right. Because it is not necessary to get trained okay get trained uh -huh. good what else why why do you think that experience is important A ver, ¿alguien más me quiere dar alguna opinión? Ahí veo que hay alguien en el waiting room too. Ajá, do you consider that experience is important, Wendy? Teacher. Tell me. The first attendance is not. Yeah, I did. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. I will do it maybe at nine, all right? I will do it at nine, please. Uh, recall me. I mean, tell me right at nine because it is not necessary to get trained. What else? Let's finish this one. Because it sets the tone to uh, available to resolve problems. It's. Mm. I want to get it. It's. Can you repeat, please? You set the tongue to available to like resolve this? the problems. Mm -hmm. The availability? To resolve problems. Ah, the ability, okay. Mm -hmm. The ability to resolve problems. All right. Yes, because they have uh, examples that these things have, have happened and they know how to solve the problem. Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. That's a very good reason too. Okay, people, please get ready. I'm going to call the attendance. So please, everybody, turn your camera on. And remember that you have to say present when I call your name. Okay. So please, everybody, turn your camera on. And when I call your name, you say present. Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez Diaz. Present, teacher. Cecilia Jasmine Menjibar Soto. Miss Menjibar. Oh, there she is. Uh, she says absent, but I think she's as a, as a listener. Okay. 
Okay, Cecilia. Just one second. I will check you in. Claudia Maria Guerrero Mejia. Present. Okay. Darío Antonio Alvarenga Gómez. Present teacher. Lizzie Elizabeth Resinos Álvarez. Present teacher. Eduardo Franco Núñez. Present teacher. Emerson Ulises Monroy Calix. Present miss. Imelda Xiamara Pineda Castro. Miss Pineda. Irma Stephanie Carranza Rivas. Es que les doy tiempo porque si a mí me pasa problema con audio, yo creo que a ustedes también, ¿verdad? En algún momento. Vamos a ver. Estábamos con Miss Pineda. No está Miss Pineda, ¿verdad? Irma Stephanie Carranza Rivas. José Alexander Hernández Carvajal. José Bernardo López Montes. Presente, teacher. José Gerardo Rivera Ochoa. Karen Janet Granado Sorellana. Present. Luis Javier Castillo. Present, teacher. Ana Scarlett Rodríguez Luna. Por ahí, Vía Marian. Ah, uh, she's also listener tonight too. All right. Marina Jansi Sandoval Bonilla. Present. Okay. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present teacher. Lili Livet Andrade Garcia. Present. Okay. Norma Patricia Viuda de Arrué Vázquez. Present teacher. Okay. Oscar Noé Magaña Martínez. Present teacher. Pablo Adalberto Abrego Vázquez. Present teacher. Sandra Leticia Peraza Sandoval. Present teacher. Tatiana Ivonne Torres de Beltrán. Present teacher. Di Maricela Ramírez Guevara. Present teacher. Okay. Is there anyone uh, that I didn't mention? Did I mention everyone? Okay. Okay, then. Let's do this. So how to use will be and could be. Uh, we use would be and could be when you want to give the impression of possibility in the future. For example, I will be a great asset. I could be of great help in the sales department. Okay, now we have to unscramble the words to form sentences, okay? Great study will be a broad date, opportunity to act. ¿Qué podría ser la primera? A ver, acordémonos del orden de las oraciones. What is the order of the words? We start with the subject, okay? So let's look for the subject. Subject is a noun or a pronoun? Me teacher. Please, It Maurice. would be. Okay. It could be a great opportunity to study abroad. Great. 
be a great opportunity to study abroad. Oops. Okay, let's look at number two. Remember, we start with the subject, then with would or could, and then be. A, a trainer? No, our employees. A trainer? Employees. Our employees. Mm -hmm. Our employees, like this? Could mm be. -hmm. Mm. I think is a training could be beneficial for our employees. Yes, that's correct. Training could be beneficial for our employees. Our employees. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about number three? Working less or mm -hmm. would be another benefit. Less or would be another benefit. Okay. And what about number four? Claudia Maria, number four. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, who wants to help Claudia? Pablo Alberto, do you want to help? Major weekends up would be uh -huh. a good option to have a happy stuff. A good option. To have a happy stuff. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the period again. Very good. What about number five? Maria could be a great help mm -hmm. in
in the inventory of department. Thank you very much. All right, there you have it. And that's it, right? We unscrambled the words, words, I'm sorry, and we made the sentences. Uh, great. Is there any question so far? Uh, okay. Is there any question so far? No. No questions? But no question. Okay. All right. So if we continue here in the in the manual. Okay. We go to the next topic, okay? This is the next topic. This is on page 13, page 13. And we want to talk about our work experience. So we are going to try to answer a third question in an interview, okay? So allow me to go there to my presentation. Is it possible to see the, the presentation? Do you see the slide? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, there you go. So our topic for tonight is how to use time expressions. Time expressions. This is your time video conference number three. So it's the third topic. How to use time expressions. We have used some of them, right? But remember that we are building brick to brick, okay? So today we are going to study some past and present perfect time expressions to answer the question when the interviewer says, okay, when the interviewer says, um, what is your work experience? Tell me about your work experience. Ah, so we need to use these time expressions to place in time our past work experiences, our past jobs, okay? So this is what we are going to learn right now. And the objective, the objective is that to talk about work experience. What is work experience? Last jobs, okay? Last companies we have been working for, okay? And maybe uh, it's our first uh, job, then when it is the first job, there is no experience, right? Or there is no work experience. But there is a way to say that too, okay? So let's check the agenda. How's it going? The feedback. The feedback was can, can't, would be, and could be. And now we are going to start to answer these two questions. How long have you been? And also, when did you? Okay, when did you? So past tense and present perfect tense. So let's see that after that, we are going to see the meaning of the time expressions. What do they refer to? And in the breakout rooms, we want to practice the conversation. Also, we want to do some written exercises. And the session one-on-one -on -one for today is for Claudia Maria Guerrero. Entonces, estamos a empezar acá, ¿verdad? Okay, we are going to start by this. Thing. I am going to um, introduce this thing like this. Okay. We are going to use simple past and we are going to use present perfect. Also, the time expressions, right? But let's read these activities. 
Oh, let's read this. Work in the company, graduate university, learn English, be a manager, selling cars, work in the beverage industry, work as an educa educator, work as a trainer. Ah, entonces, si queremos armar una pregunta, ¿ya? Yeah, para que nos cuenten la experiencia que tienen haciendo algún trabajo o alguna actividad, then we are going to join or place together all these words, okay? For example, how long have you, uh, este sería per present perfect, okay? Present perfect. Entonces, vamos a usar un cuadrito por acá para ir armando la, la pregunta, okay? Y no vamos a ir anotándolas todas, sino que lo que vamos a hacer un speaking, ¿ok? A ver, no nos vamos a detener mucho más que speaking, speaking, ¿ok? Entonces, la primera sería, how long have you been working? In, ay, I'm sorry, in the company. Estoy usando esta primera, miren, work in the company, okay? How long have you been working in the company? Okay? Aquí es como un presente perfecto, pero ya más continuado, ¿verdad? Entonces, vamos a, ah, está bien, have been working. Have you been, 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 been. Ay, I'm sorry. Okay, y así vamos a ir armando las demás, okay? Vamos a ver. How long have you been working in the company? How long have you been working in the company? Veamos acerca de graduarse en la universidad. Graduarse en la universidad se hace desde el pasado hasta hoy? No, ¿verdad? Solo es una vez en la vida o es una vez al finalizar el periodo de estudio, porque puede tener muchas carreras, ¿verdad? Entonces, está graduando constantemente, nomás va terminando cada carrera. Pero es un espacio de tiempo que es una acción que empieza en el pasado y termina en el pasado. Entonces, ya no usamos el presente perfecto, ¿verdad? Ahí, ¿qué usaríamos? Usaríamos el pasado simple, the simple past. Entonces, ¿cómo usaríamos o haríamos esta pregunta? Usaríamos esta otra, miren, para hablar del tiempo, right? When did you graduate university? Okay. When did you graduate university? Okay. Podríamos decir, when did you graduate? También es correcto. Okay. A ver. Empecemos a hacerlas entonces. Yo digo un nombre, usted agarra la que sigue, la que sigue, la que sigue. Usted piensa, ¿esa actividad empieza y termina en el pasado o empieza en el pasado y sigue al presente? ¿Verdad? Va, si sigue al presente y a un futuro incierto, entonces podemos usar el presente perfecto. Pero si esa actividad empieza y termina en el pasado, es el Pasado simple. Ok, bye. Vamos a comenzar con Jose Bernardo. We are going to start with Jose Bernardo. Ok, and let's think about learning English. Ok. Uh, when did you learn English? Great, great. A ver, um, let's look. Oscar, um, Oscar Noé? Yes, teacher. Okay, with be a manager. Mm -hmm. When do you be a manager? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. This one can be both, right? This one can be both. Pero para preguntar el pasado de B, no usamos did, okay? Utilizamos otra estructura y la voy a poner por acá solo para que la tengamos en mente. ¿Ok? El pasado simple del de verbo be sería was 
and where. Ok. Entonces, la pregunta sería, when were you a manager? Ok. When were you a manager? When were you a manager? Si lo dijéramos así directo. Entonces, si usamos el presente perfecto, tendría un poquito de más sentido, Oscar. Ok. How long have you been a manager? Ok. How long have you been a manager? Lo voy a poner por aquí arriba para que lo recordemos. Ok, Oscar. Okay. How long have you been a manager? Ok. What about the next one, eh, Imelda? Selling cars. Selling cars. Open your microphone, please. Perdón. Eh, how not had you eh, selling car? Ok, ajá. Podríamos entonces usar, usarlo acá, ¿verdad? How long have you been, uh, uh, been selling, selling car? Cars. All right. There you go. Thank you very much. And let's think about working the beverage industry. And we're going to ask, let's look at Luis Javier. No está Luis Javier por ahí. Así que la pregunta. How can we ask? Work in the beverage industry. That's a work experience, right? Tatiana, uh, she's a listener. Vladimir, what do you think, Vladimir? Um, Eduardo. Eduardo Franco. Uh, how long are you working in the beverage industry? Oh, very good. It was how long have you worked? Yeah, how long have you worked? Very good. Hmm? And it could be when did you start working in the beverage industry. Uh -huh. When did you start? Yes, that will be good too. When did you start working in the beverage industry? Yeah, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It makes sense too. What about work as an educator? Darío Antonio? Um, when did you work as an educator? Very good, very good. What about the last one, Nelly? Nelly? Who wants to do the last one? Emerson? How long have you been to work at the train? Sí, el Uber. <laughs> Adios. Sorry, Emerson. Sorry, I couldn't hear you very well. Just one second. Gracias. 
teacher, your microphone. I'm so sorry. Okay, Emerson. Hello, Miss. The last one, please. Can you repeat it? I couldn't hear okay. you very well. Yes, no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, how long? How long have you worked a uh, trainer? Okay, have you worked? Remember the past participle form. It will be worked as a trainer. All right, there you go. Now. To answer these questions, to answer these questions, that's the trick. Ahí está el truco, that's the trick. If we want to answer these questions, we have to place the activities in time. And we want to- uh, But now it's not, it's not about the, it's not about the microphone. Maybe it's your sign. Okay, if we want to answer these questions, we have to make a complete sentence, okay? And the sentence will be according to the question, right? It will be according to the question. And in this case, how long have you been working in the company? Mm. Aquí yo podría contestar de diferentes maneras, ¿verdad? Pero usando siempre. La continuidad del presente perfecto, right? I have been working. Y necesito un tiempo, ¿verdad? Necesito expresar el tiempo. Por eso vamos sí. a usar time expressions. ¿Ok? Y dentro de esto tenemos, por ejemplo, ¿cómo lo diríamos en español? Diríamos, ay, yo he trabajado en esta empresa desde 1990. Por decir algo, ok? Mancha. I've been working in this company Mancha. since Ten. this day, ok? Since, since, mm -hmm. since 1990, ok? So, we have the first time word or the time expression here, ok? Since, este. you see? This is the first one, yeah? Y así sucesivamente para poder nosotros darle respuesta a estas preguntas y hablar de nuestra experiencia de trabajo o previa, entonces tenemos que aprender a utilizar estas palabras, ¿ok? Vamos a ir a ver algunas. Me quiero, no sé si esto me lo va a copiar. Yeah, I will stop sharing because this is not going to work, I think. Maybe here. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Me di enter porque si se copió. Okay. With the last machine, I couldn't do that. So now let's go to our manuals. In our manuals, we have a box. In our manuals, we have a box. This box is on page 14. On page 14, okay? The time expressions are used for that, to place the activities or the events in a period of time. Okay, so if we go to page 14, we are going to see some words for our vocabulary. Okay, and here it is. You see? And it says, for, since, from, to, then, until, and until and then. Okay, and then we can also make combinations between them, all right? But the first one, use for plus the period of time, like 
I work in Indiana for seven years. Okay. Así como decíamos allá, I've worked or I have been working in this company since, que sería el siguiente, miren, since a year. Okay. A year, a month. Y ahí ya puede poner usted acá el parámetro de don, desde cuándo, ¿ok? It could be, mostly is a year. Mostly is a year. Usually we don't have exact dates. For example, I don't say, I uh, have worked in this company since the 13th of May of, oh, I don't know, 2005. Or I don't say I've worked here since May the 13th, mm. unless it's closer, right? Maybe it's not counting years that you have been working there. But let's continue. From, it's it starts in that point, okay? From, but we need another one, two, from, January to November, from 1995 to the date or to 2023, for example, then it means that something finished and then the different events started. So we could say I worked in that company until 2011, then I quit, okay? We use until, then. And the last one, um, we use until to mark the end of a period of time or an activity. Until, hasta, ¿verdad? Es como el punto final de algo, until. Okay. Vamos a practicar un poquito la conversación para verlo ahí. We are going to practice the conversation to see this in action, okay? And we're going to see that, for example, how long significa cuánto tiempo, okay? How long, el significado de esa frase, WH phrase, is cuánto tiempo, okay? Then let's read. Tell me about your work experience. I worked at Unilever for five years. Actually, I worked in this company for from 2011 to 2016. I quit because I was offered a new job in Panama. And what happened there? It was just for a short period of time. It was just for eight months until my project was done. Then I came back to El Salvador. And you have not worked since uh, <laughs> you came back? Not really. I have done some independent jobs, you know, but they have not been for long. Okay, let's read it slowly. Tell me about your work experience. I worked at Unilever for five years. Actually, I worked in this company from 2011 to 2016. I quit because I was offered a new job in Panama. And what happened there? It was just for a short period of time. It was just for eight months until my project was done. Then I came back to El Salvador and you have not worked since you came back? Not really. I have done some independent jobs, you know, but they have not been for long. Okay then. Is there any questions so far about the vocabulary in the conversation? Questions about the vocabulary in this conversation? No, teacher. Okay. Okay.
All right, we want to listen to Daisy and Wendy Maricela. Please role play the conversation. Yes, it is. Sorry, no logro hacer un poquito más grande la pantalla. One moment, please, teacher. Excuse okay. me. Okay. Yes. Okay. Empiezo yo. Uh, I am Julie. All right. My, You're tell, going to play Julie. Tell my tell me about your work experience. I work uh, at Unilever for five years. Actually, I work uh, in the company from uh, 40, 11, it's correct. 2011 to 2016, but here we say 2011, you can say. I quit because I was, I was, uh, after, after Offered, uh huh. My new job is Panama. Uh, what happened there? Uh, it was, I just for, I no, permítame, es que estoy en mi cel y. Me queda muy pequeña la pantalla. All right. If you uh, want, we can. Yeah, okay. okay. I was used for a short period period of time. I was used for eight eight months until my project was done. Then I came back to El Salvador. And you have not working since you came back? Not really. I have done some independent jobs. You, you know, but they have not been for long. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. We want to listen just uh, two more classmates and then we are going to practice by ourselves in the breakout rooms. So let's see Marina Yancy and Eduardo Franco, please. Okay, tell me about your work experience. Marina? Maybe she's not available, right? Okay, Melda Xiomara, please. You are Anna. You play Anna. Hola. Este, I work it in Unilever for five years. Uh, actually, I work it in this company from uh, 2011 to 2016. I quit because it was offering a new a new hot in Panama. And what happened there? 
It's what you for a short period of time. I was used for eight months until my project was done. Then, then I come back to El Salvador. And you have no work at science, you came back? Not really. I have done some independent job. You know, but they have not been for long. All right, thank you very much. So now let's refine some pronuncia pronunciations here. For example, when we say the years, when we say the years, you can use the long way or the short way. Uh, from 2000 to 2010, we say the long way, okay? 2011, I, I myself prefer the long way, okay, or the long form. But yeah, you can say 2011, but you have to make the difference between the two uh, parts of this number because you have to say 20 and 11, so 2011, and then the other to 2016, okay? And let's say the other thing, aquí todos me están diciendo I, Aquí es it, it was, it was, it was, okay? It was just, all right, Mr. Alvaringa. And it says, it was just, it was just, a ver todos, open your microphone and try to um, imitate this and say, it was just, it was just, it was just, it was just, it was just. It was just, 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 it it was just, 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 it was Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then it was just for a short period of time. Okay. Sure. It was just for a short period of time. Okay. Period of time. Period. Mm -hmm. Period. period. Yeah. And the other one. Mm, I will need to check this out because sometimes you are going to listen that some people pronounce this until and others maybe they are pronouncing until, okay? So until. I want you to check this. Until. Mm -hmm. Until. 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 Mm -hmm. Until. Until. You see? Until. Okay. Uh, esta U que ven acá, esta U es como la que pronunciamos con up. Okay. Se recuerdan ayer vimos algunas. Okay. Es el mismo sonido. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Entonces, uniéndolo. Until. You see? Until. Until, until, okay? Until. Until. Listen again. Until. Until. Got it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. until. until. Tail. Tail. Okay? Until. 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 And we have the other one. Esta. Esta es since. Okay? Since. Aquí no decimos um, science. Porque since. science es ciencia. Okay? <laughs> ese sonido es ciencia. Entonces, aquí es since, para since. decir desde. Since you came back. Since. Mm. A ver, mm. todos, please say I'm since back. after me. Since. 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 Since you came back. Since. Since you came back. And you can check it out too if you want. Always you have, uh, when you have uh, this 
confusion or you were not sure about the pronunciation, you may look it up and you will um, get it right, okay? Because if we don't pronounce correctly, maybe we are saying a different word, okay? Sense. Got it? All right, now we know how to pronounce these words, okay? Um, estas tres preguntas, okay? Las contestan después de haber practicado la conversación. Vámonos al breakout room only 10 minutes and we come back, okay, to the main room because to, uh, right now it's 9 and 41, so 9.51 we are back, okay? Just one second. And let's practice this. Brian. Ah, tenemos varios que están de oyentes. Oh, my goodness. Ahí se me genera siempre situación. Si veo a alguien que se queda solito, lo voy a pasar a otro, ¿ok? Vamos. Let's open this up.
Hello, Vladimir. Hi, Eduardo. Hi. Tenemos, creo que tenemos desactivado también el compartir. Hi, teacher. Hi. Que nos ayuda con eso, a desactivar el tema este del compartir pantalla. Right. Try now. Estoy intentando, pero... Ah, hoy sí, hoy sí. Gracias. Gracias, gracias. All right. No, no sé, yo la de Mirta vez creo que está ocupadito, quizás. No, 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 para nada. Démosle, démosle. <risa> Vaya, ahorita. Vamos a... Pero bájelo un poco, que no logro ver también. Ahí está. De ahí. Y de ahí también. Ok. ¿Quién empieza? Uh, tell me about your work experience. I worked at Unilever for five years. Actually, I worked in this in this company from 2011 and 2015. I quit because I was offered a new job in Panama. And what happened there? It was just for a short period of time. I was just for eight months until my project was done. Then I came back to El Salvador. And you have no work since you come back? No, really. I have done some independent job, you know, but they have been for long. Okay, cambiamos hoy roles. Okay. Tell me about your work experience. I worked at Unilever for five years. Actually, I work in the in this company from two half two two half or eleven to two two half two hundred two thousand two thousand eleven two thousand two thousand. 2011 to 2016. I killed because I was offered a new job in Panama. And what happened there? It was used for a short period of time. It was just for eight months until my project was done. Then I come back to El Salvador. And you have not worked since you came back? No, really. I have done some independent jobs, you know, but they have not been for long. Okay. Tell you me have about to answer the questions. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. All right. Okay, teacher. Okay, continue, guys. I'm going to another room, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Estoy yo sola, teacher. Estoy yo sola. Daisy no me contestó. Um, she working since 2011. La otra vez. Número dos. La respuesta sería no que Entonces la respuesta es cost. 
Karma and Karen, you can practice here in the main session. Okay, Karen. Hello. Hello, hola. Uh, practiquemos la conversación. Sí, solo que yo no tengo el libro. No, no lo he podido descargar. Pero en el, en el WhatsApp está también, lo acaban de mandar. <coughs> Quiero ver. Ahí está es la que, imagen. Hasta ahorita es que estaba solita yo. Yo también y me aparece que estoy con Daisy, pero no me contestaba. Entonces ah. me puse a hacer las preguntas. ¿Ya lo encontró? Ya. Vaya. Entonces, ¿quiere ser Julio o Ana? Ah, cualquiera. Vaya. Si quiere, empiece. Vaya. Tell me about your work experience. Son independent jobs. Ahí, ahí sí sería she has. Sí, sí. She has done some independent in the go. Independent. Independence. Mm -hmm. Independent mm -hmm. jobs. Yo creo que ya terminamos. Yo creo. Okay, let's go to the main session. Thank you. Este, repasamos una última vez. Ah, está bien. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Do it. Oh. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about your work experience. Experience. I work at. Uh, I work. I work at Unilever for five years. Actually, I work in this company from two thousand eleven to two thousand sixteen. I quit because I was offered a new job in Panama. And what happened there? Happened there? It was just for a short period of time. It was just for eight months until my project was done. Then I came back to El Salvador. And you have no work at San... No, allí dijo que era San... San. You came back... Uh, not really. I have done some independent jobs, you know? but they have not been for long. Okay. Okay. Quería hagamos las preguntas, antes que las preguntas nos falten. Vaya. Vamos, bajemos. Creo que ahí, no sé si aparece en el WhatsApp las preguntas. Quiero ver. Pues a mí me aparece <ríe> la página completa. Ah, pues entonces sí aparecen, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Más, sí, sí. Bueno, entonces dice que vamos a contestarla. Ah, ya tenemos otro compañero. Hola. Ah, pues ah. practiquemos con él si quiere. Quiero ver. Norma okay. y Karen. Y okay. que a ustedes, a ustedes las tuve que dejar aquí en la, en la sesión principal y ahorita ya están todos regresando. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problem, no problem. That was good. That was good. Uh -huh. Okay, entonces practicamos otra vez. No, right now we are going to continue with the class. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, okay, teacher. Thank you, teacher. All right. Okay, people. The question number one. Who wants to say the question number one? I mean, the answer. You have to say the question and the answer, all right? So let's go to the, to see the first group. Uh, they were Cecilia, Claudia, and Imelda. What did you write in the, in the question number one? Imelda? Eh, Read the question sería. and give me the answer. Uh, when did Anna start working in Unilever? Yes. 
sería en 2011. Eh, when did she when did she start working there? Eh, 2016. Twenty sixteen. Sixteen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. And number two, please. Um, other group was Jose Bernardo, Nelly, and, pa and Pablo. Number two. Right. Read the question oh. and say the answer. Okay. Why did she quit her job in Unilever? She quit because she was offered for a new job in Panama. Great. Okay, number three, people. Number three, the next group was Sandra and Tatiana. And number three. Have you ever done independence jobs? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, she has done some independent jobs. Uh, this is about yourselves. This is your own information. Have you ever done independent jobs? ¿Alguna vez ustedes han hecho trabajos independientes? Yes. Okay. Como es una pregunta directa, contestamos de esa manera. Have you uh, ever done independent jobs? I yes. I have. Yes, I have. All right, that's the answer. But after that, that answer, you can give an explanation because everybody wants to know, right? Everybody wants to know. Uh, for example, can you give an example, Sandra and Tatiana? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, um uh, in the independent independent jobs in sales on sales, sales. oh okay sales. Sales. yes Good. you sell different products yes uh, make, makeup oh good uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes by catalog um, um, level. Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah. yeah, that's an independent job, and you have extra incomes, right? All right, very good. Mm -hmm. Have you done that for long? Tatiana? No, no, um, uh, for two years. Oh, all right. All right. Thank yeah. you very much for sharing, Tatiana. Thank you, Sandra, too. All right. Then, guys, allow me to call the roll. Tomorrow we're going to continue with this topic. And I want you to maybe and uh, get swill. I'm going to fix the situation with the audio. Créanme, pasé ahora casi tres horas luchando por esta cosa. Incluso desinstalé todo lo de... Eh, los drivers del audio de esta computadora Cuidado, pues. y los reinstalé okay. entonces sí he trabajado por tenerles buen audio pero mm. Dios sabrá realmente qué le ah, pasa claro. a esto ahí lo voy a llevar a la mía teacher <risa> please please <risa> Teacher, pero la mía también así está. A veces ni me dejaba encender la cámara. No sé qué le pasa. De es por el internet. Puede ser. Que pare... Ajá, que a veces hay muchas personas en su colonia conectada y, y baja el internet. It could be. Yeah, it could be. All right. Mm -hmm. eh, Carlos Vladimir Rodríguez Díaz. Everybody, please turn your camera on. Gracias, teacher. All right. Thank you. Cecilia Yasmin Menjibar Soto. Miss Cecilia, I saw you were connected. Uh, where are you? Cecilia, Cecilia, do you see Cecilia? Oh, she says that she is a listener. All right. Uh -huh. uh, Claudia Maria Guerrero Mejia. Present. 
Okay. Darío Antonio Alvarenga Gómez. Daisy Elizabeth Recinos Álvarez. Present teacher. Eduardo Franco Núñez. Present. Good night, teacher. Have a very good night. Uh, Emerson Ulises Monroy Calix. Present, miss. Imelda Xiomara Pineda Castro. I am here, teacher. Good night. Okay. Have a very good night, you too. Irma Stephanie Carranza Rivas. Didn't she join? All right. Jose Alexander Hernandez Carvajal. Jose Bernardo Lopez Montes. Present here. Jose Gerardo Rivera Ochoa. Karen Janet Granado Sorellana. Present teacher. Okay, Luis Javier Castillo. Present teacher. Okay. Um, Mariana Scarlett Rodriguez Luna. Marina Jancy Sandoval Bonilla. Present. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present teacher. Fred Andrade García. Present. Norma Patricia Viuda de Arre. Present teacher. Oscar Noé Magaña Martínez. Present teacher. Pablo Adalberto Abrego Vázquez. Present teacher. Sandra Leticia Peraza Sandoval. Present teacher. Tatiana Ivonne Torres de Beltrán. Present teacher. Wendy Maricela Ramírez Guevara. Present teacher, good night. Okay, good night. The session one on one for tonight is for Claudia Maria. Claudia Maria, are you going to stay? Yes, I am. All right. Then everybody, please do your homework and have a very good night. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. in your video conference number four. So bye bye. Take care. Night teacher. Bye. Bye. Tomorrow. Night. Night, teacher. Bye. Night. 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 Tomorrow. Almost there, almost there. All right, there we go. Hello, Claudia. How Hi. can I help you? How can I assist you? Uh, I don't have any problems with the topics, but in homework number two, Mm -hmm. The last two sentences, I, I don't have the right answer. And you, I, I just saw it in the class. Okay, and homework two. Yes. Uh-huh. This uh, is a I, scramble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In number four, I I think is, and we just saw in the class, <laughs> weekends off will be a good option to have a happy staff. Oh, yes, you're right. There is a mistake right there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because uh, the word is staff, and in the answer, they have consignated employees. Okay. 
So uh, if you change staff for employees, it will, I mean, it will be better. I mean, it will be correct. Yeah. I'm so Thank sorry. You. Yeah, Thanks. I didn't notice this at the beginning. Okay, I didn't notice this at the beginning. I, this is wrong. So it will be, weekends off will be a good option to have happy employees. But yeah, um, happy employees, that's what they, uh, that is the input, okay? That is the input. Yeah, I have. Uh, I think employees, I don't have E-M-P-L-O-Y. Uh, Y-E-E-S. Double E. Yes, double E. Mm -hmm. I, I, mm -mm. Doesn't get it either? Mm -mm. Weekends of will be a good option to have a happy employees. No, uh, mm -mm. only happy employees because employees uh, are plural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so weekends of will be a good option uh -huh. to have happy employees. Mm -hmm. and I'm then, so sorry. And we are uh, going to... Um, we're going to do the announcement in the WhatsApp group about that because this is, uh, uh, well, I haven't seen this input before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And number five, mm -hmm. I don't, uh, what? Maria? I it. Just give me one second because. Okay, I okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back there. Uh huh. In the number, Five. Five. Uh huh. Maria could be a great help in the inventory department. Would be, oh, I remember. Uh, uh -huh. just, allow me to get there. That would be. Oh, a great. Mm -hmm. uh, no, you've got to write only a great help. Uh, allow me to, to see the inputs here. And let me see. It says Maria. Mm -hmm. Maria could be of great help in the inventory department. And to see the word the of? Mm -hmm. Of? It goes uh, before great. Okay, Maria could uh -huh. be of great help. Ah, of a great. Ah. No, ah. Mm -mm. Oh. We don't have ah in the words. Ah, no. No, we don't have it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Got it. Nice. Yes. Nice, okay. nice. Okay. Uh -huh. um, I, I, I already did the, the homework for, for today. <laughs> oh, right. All right. What about the number three? I think you may do it. The... You may do it. Uh, yeah, because it was about the time expressions. Remember? Things yes. four. So I think you can make it. Mm -hmm. I already did. Oh, did you? Good, good. This was easy, right? Yes, yes. Uh -huh, this was easy. The, what we want to, I mean, what we need to master is if it is going to be in the past simple tense or mm -hmm. you can say that with the present perfect tense. Yes. That's the difference between these expressions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. All so, right, nice. Only that. <laughs> okay. Okay, then, uh, let me just see, 10, 10. Okay, then, uh, Claudia, it was a pleasure to meet you personally. So you. see you tomorrow and have a very good night. You too. Good night. Thank you. Bye.